This is Peak of the Week. It's your shot of spiritual caffeine to get you over the hump of the week. And I want to introduce you to David's Place. I told you guys a little bit ago that um, we were doing something really special. David, when David was spending the last, this is my son I'm speaking about, by the way, um, in case you're not kind of up to speed on uh, my son David. The light's really weird here tonight, but anyway, it's fine. But our son David um, passed away May 1st and spent his last year living with us here in our home in Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. And um, he said when he was here, he said, Mom and Dad, you know, let's, let's reimagine. We had a pergola up here and he was like, let's reimagine this space. And, um, and so we've been in this home 20 years and we did. We created this space called David's Place, which he never got to be in physically because we broke ground in April and it was just completed. And I know I told you guys, and I can't really show you completely, but can you see it? This is our home and uh, this is David's place. Um, and it's going to be a place where we entertain and we have always kept the doors wide open in our home here. And um, so I'm just gonna show you around a little bit. This was David's idea. The whole thing was keep it open, very open. And this was a pergola, actually, and then we put a, a um, can you see, put a roof over the top and a place, of course, to dine because we love to feed people. And for just sitting by the fire, there's a fireplace here. And we, I want to show you something really, really fabulous. And you won't be able to read it because I know it translates, um, but this is a commemorative tile then it's a it's a quote from david and i know it's going to translate backwards so i'll go ahead and read the commemorative tile that we've put up on the fireplace it says this there is love and community and joy to be had in the present if i choose to dwell here david cameron hicks my son and david said that while he was going through his um, chemotherapy i'm going to sit down in a seat here by the fire <laughs> and um, David David shared that quote um, and we were so it was one of the ones that we loved so much that we just went ahead and decided to put it up here because of the whole idea of presence and I just want to talk to you just for a minute about that in this peak of the week it's your shot of spiritual caffeine to get you over the hump of the week I want to be honest with you I have had a really rough week I have been last night I tossed and turned and cried and cried until I finally fell asleep, but it was at least an hour. And I've been struggling in the last probably three days, really struggling. And I think it's because the holidays are coming and I'm without my firstborn son. That's the truth. I'm struggling. But one of the things that David says in his quote, there is joy and love and community to be had in the present if I choose to dwell here is helping me right now. Being present is not something we do very well. I don't know, maybe you're excellent at it. But by and large, I don't know that we are, and I certainly think as we're heading into the Christmas season, the idea of being present, and for those of us who live in the US, heading into the Thanksgiving next week um, is Thanksgiving. The idea of, of, again, being present. So here's what we tend to do, right? We tend to look back and retrospect, or look ahead, and in both situations, looking back and looking ahead, there's merit, right? There's good things in looking back we can learn from the past. And certainly looking ahead, vision and anticipation, these are good things. Also, when you look back, sometimes you do other things, not just learn from the past, but you feel a lot of regret or guilt. When you look ahead, you have ill feelings because sometimes you can feel overwhelmed by possibilities, overwhelmed by uncertainty. And so there can be anxiety on both sides, good things on both sides, but also, you know, struggles. So being present is more manageable, especially if you're struggling like I am. Being present is something that you can do. It's more contained and you can do it right in the moment. I can right now realize that I'm speaking to you and I can see you here. I'm speaking to you. I'm in David's place. I can focus on the one or 
focus on the situation that's right in front of my face. And that is comforting. So I wanna encourage you as we go into the holiday season, whether it's Thanksgiving for you, because it may not be, um, if you're outside of the US, or heading into the Christmas season, or whatever it is you celebrate, I want to encourage you to be present. To put your phone down when you're speaking to people. To settle your hands. Are you always busy, busy? Settle and practice being present, leaning in, listening, asking good questions, seeking to understand. That's being present. And I pray that for you and I pray that for me. I need that for me today. But this is your shot of spiritual caffeine. This is peak of the week. And I hope this Wednesday it helps you as much as it helps me get over the hump of the week. I'm looking forward to maybe a, maybe a lighter evening. We'll see. But in the meantime, I'm just wanting to show you David's place and share a little bit of what David was imparting to me and to our family and how we will use this space, David's place out here and our home always, to be present with the people God has given us to love right in front of our very faces for as long as we are um, given the pleasure of their company. So, peak of the week, shot of spiritual caffeine. God bless you.